you are a ruler of a kingdom surrounded by hostile kingdoms or friendly trade partners and military allies. It's a strategy game that simulates how kingdoms are run and conquered, as well as how influential religions are during these times. Having said that, your goal is to conquer other kingdoms through war and befriend others through diplomacy to help your cause. If you choose the path of war or simply try to defend your kingdom, then battles will occur. When it does, a minigame battle commences. In battles, your general can issue commands to your troops. You can tell them when to advance. It's a side view perspective where you push or pull the opposing army. Commands can be issued during battle, but they have a bit of cooldown. So timing a command is necessary. For example, when troops in the front line get heavily damaged and are moved at the back row by issuing a command, these troops can gradually restore their lost HP. But if you use the commands needlessly, it'll be a waste. There are other commands like issuing a cavalry unit to charge from your back line, then gradually move away from the melee to let your infantry units finish your foe. Generals and armies earn experience and level up. When they do, they become stronger and can even specialize or branch up. Besides the basic troops and branches you can upgrade them to, there are irregular troops or unique troops you can meet on your conquest. More troop variety recruitment opens up when you conquer new lands. Sometimes you can get rewarded with special troops unique to a kingdom you have conquered. You can't win wars alone, so you have to be diplomatic from time to time. There is a slider in the diplomacy screen between negative 12 up to positive 12, the latter being the most friendly relationship you can have with another kingdom. You can simply increase this slider by offering tributes to that kingdom. And when you reach a certain point in the slider, you can trade with them and eventually make them your ally. What's weird for me in this system is when my ally breaks an alliance with me and then afterwards I can just simply ask them to be my ally again and they will immediately accept as long as the point slider meets the requirement for being military allies. What I don't like in battles is it can be so repetitive that there really isn't much variety in strategy. Sure, you can mix unit combinations and move their formation around and properly time commands, but it does not work as complex as it sounds. Outside of battles in the campaign map, I like the strategy involved in conquering other cities. Usually the best course of action would be to attack a city without having to go through a fort because forts are, well, fortified. But if you do have to push through a fort or main city, you'd best be prepared because it has walls with archers that give the defenders an advantage. You can whittle their strength down by destroying one wall at a time, by issuing attack orders to your generals each turn since you can only attack one city with one general at a time each turn. When a wall gets destroyed, it needs time to repair and their general and army that just fought would need to rest some turns to replenish their troops. If you have more than one general that are best equipped for battles, then you'll have to keep the pressure by attacking the same city each turn so they won't have time to regenerate. Conquering kingdoms or cities nets you with bonus resources depending on the city. Each city has unique resource yields. How favorable you are to your religion can be measured in a slider. Being favorable to your religion can give you benefits like unit offerings or supplies from the church. Along the way, there are things on the side that you can do in order for your armies and generals to grow stronger and your resources to expand, like recruiting generals at the inn, meeting merchants and choosing to either buy bulk materials or monthly deliveries, bribing rabble-rousers or choosing to police them. These other actions you do in the game has some sort of minigame. For example, in the library where you can earn research points, there's a minigame where you stack same colored books like tile matching games. When recruiting a general at a tavern or inn, a mastermind type of game like the board game commences. These minigames are a certainly healthy addition to eliminate some of the repetition of clicking a task and ending a turn. The game is simple enough to grasp especially if you've already played other turn-based empire building strategy games. It somewhat reminds me of Total War's campaign in a simpler way. 
The game has an in-game manual, but I advise taking the scenario first since it basically acts as a well-made tutorial with comical dialogues, animations, and expressions, so it's not boring. I had fun with the scenario and made learning the game a breeze. Once you fully understand the game, free play, the game sandbox mode, is where you'll spend your time replaying the game. It's basically the same as scenario mode, only there aren't any of the story dialogues and you are free to choose however you want to progress. In free play, you can choose to play on maps by either selecting Middle East, West Mediterranean, Europe, or Mediterranean. If you want to combine them, then choose World Map, where all these regions are combined. The characters in this game are all card-shaped with drawn colored art as their head and body. The animations of the cutscenes may look simplistic, but it properly conveys the message well. These small cutscenes are fun to look at in a few hours of gameplay, but the longer you are in, it feels repetitive. Luckily, you can speed up time so you won't really need to watch every cutscene when an event happens. The characters are quirky and humorous easy to like and are even lovable. They are cute and their emotions, gestures, and facial expressions are charming. Both the dialogue and expressions of the characters are comical as I have already previously stated. The animations make sense. When you issue a command to your troops, the general sends a carrier pigeon that flies toward your fighting troops before your troops can comply with your commands. The farther your troops are to their general, the longer the delay is for your command to activate since the pigeon will travel farther. It felt like I was playing a very simple campaign map of Total War. I did not like that there was no way to make other kingdoms your vassal or liberate them through diplomacy. If you want another kingdom to be in your control, you'll just have to conquer them. Battles may be a side view push and pull, but army compositions can have strengths and weaknesses depending on where and who you're fighting. Who you'll conquer first and who you'll have to befriend at the right moment are all important decisions that can lead to success or ruin. The simplicity works. There is enough strategy to keep you occupied. In general, you get good value for this game. With all that said, I give this game an 8 out of 10.